Open your Bible to Luke chapter 1. <clears throat> now I begin reading with verse 39. Thank y'all for praying for me. Amen. Looks like already, looks like already the hiccups have stopped. We must be on our way. <laughs> it's hard to preach when you got the hiccups. <laughs> it's awful. Luke chapter 1, <clears throat> beginning with verse 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And we know Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, according to verse 36. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice saying, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. He had more joy. Bo he got you and most of us have an entire lifetime. Amen. Verse 45. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And maybe said, My soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. You may be seated. I'll lead us in a brief word of prayer, and I'm going to preach on the joyful Christian. And no matter what we go through, God wants us to be joyful Christians. And then this evening, I hope you'll come this evening because uh, I'm going to deal with suffering. Job's thorn in the flesh this evening. So I hope you'll come. I'll share some things with you. I hope I'll be able to help to you. Pray in your heart as I pray all day. <clears throat> Our Father and our God in heaven, Father, I can't thank enough God for saving my soul. I can't thank enough Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. You're so precious. You're the best thing ever happened to us, ever will happen to us. We love you this morning. Forgive us for not loving as much as we should, though. Thank you for God. These are precious brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, God, for their willingness to God uh, get out of the burden and pray for us. God, I can't thank you enough. There's just no people like your people, God. And there's no one like you, Jesus. Oh, precious Jesus. Again, we love you. Oh, God. Father, in these days, that's really drawn out of you and God drawn out of us. Now, Father, please give me a liberty. Make it easy for me, please. Jesus, my heaven and God, put thy spirit right now to bring the message. If there's anybody here lost, save them. And God, if there's, any, if there's anybody here lost their joy, I'll point your help them to get it back this morning. Speak now, God, as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Not many years ago, four teenage boys stood before a judge. And uh, that for beating up a poor elderly man and just for a dollar and 76 cents of that. That judge said, boys, why did you do it? Why in the world did you do it? One of those boys said, because there's nothing else to do. We just got bored and wanted something to do, that's all. You can't help but notice when you're walking down the sidewalks in your cities that people are bored. People are really bored. Mabel wasn't bored. She said, my spirit has rejoiced. She was rejoicing. She was a great Christian. 
And again, on one of our college campuses here in America, not many years ago, there were some students who entered a contest to write a definition of life for the college newspaper. I'm going to give you three, and it'll probably shock you just like it did me. Now, remember, I said they want honorable mention. One of them said, life is a joke that isn't even funny. Another one said, life is a jail sentence that we get for the crime of being born. A third one said, life is a disease for which the only cure is death. How bleak, how dismal, how depressing yeah. is an outlook on life like that. Whew. Well, maybe didn't have that kind of a mindset. Yeah. And she didn't have a lot of the things that we have in this day and time. She didn't have a lot of luxuries. And uh, she didn't have a bank account. Yet she said, my spirit has just done God my Savior. She didn't have a, a car or carport or television, oh. typewriter, telephone, computer, such as you, you and I have. You actually said, my spirit has just done God my Savior. They, and maybe didn't live where the bright light, the loud music, and the action was. She lived in a little place called Nazareth. Some of us been to the Holy Land, y'all been there, and I've, we've been to Nazareth. Man, it wasn't, what, wasn't much more than just a valley. And, uh, a village, I mean. A village. Yet she said, my spirit after Jordan and God my Savior. Maybe wasn't engaged to the city bank or the country rancher. Yet she said, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. <coughs> then why was maybe such a joyful Christian? I'm going to give you five sources of joy in her life, and then I'll let you go. Number one, she knew the joy of salvation. Amen. That's where it starts. That's where mine started. Amen. The joy of salvation. I didn't come when I joined the church. It didn't come when I got baptized. It come when I got saved. Yeah. When I became a born-again Christian. See, I never forget when God saved me. Been about 50 years ago. <coughs> in a little country Baptist church in South Georgia. I never forget God put me on a deep conviction during the invitation. And... Mamie Calhoun came down the aisle and knelt over here on this end of the communion table and started praying. God spoke to my heart and said, if she needs to go down and kneel and pray, how much more to you? Well, I stood there and wrestled with that, and I thought, well, if my mama would go down and kneel and pray, I would say, mama, you count. Because I, I saw another woman come in the aisle, come out of the aisle, and I looked, and you guessed that it. it was my mama. She came and got on this end of the communion table with my aunt, and I, I came and got on this end. But my heart said, God, I'm lost. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Jesus come in my heart and saved me. And he did. Amen. He did. I knew before I got off my knees I was saved. Amen. Thank God I'm glad you can know that you know that you know that you know that if you die today, you're going to heaven. Amen. And if you don't, I'd get that settled. You better, because eternity is a long time. Boy, I'd hate to know I had to spend eternity in hell. Amen. Oh, my. I beg God every day of my life. To say the millions right here in this country is lost without God going to hell. God has to do what we can to try to keep people from going to hell. So maybe you the joy of salvation. You say, wait a minute, preacher. Maybe it was the mother of our Lord. You mean to tell me she had to get saved? Yes. And verse 47 is proof positive of the fact that Mary had to get saved. She said, my spirit is at rejoicing God, my who? Savior. That automatically denotes the fact that Mary had to get saved. See, the truth of the matter is, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. That means Mary, that means you, me. See, you must be born again, Jesus said. And he wasn't talking to doubt and outer when he said that. He was talking to up and outer. Nicodemus, a very religious man. You can join church, get baptized, and even be active in the church and still die and go to hell. You better make sure you're saved. Amen. You must be born again, Jesus said. I'm so glad I'm saved, thank God. I'm glad COVID can't affect that. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just to save 
since I had the stuff as before I had it. <coughs> Ain't gonna change a thing. All right. She needs the joy of salvation. Say the truth of my is, is maybe didn't go to heaven because she gave birth to Jesus. Maybe went to heaven because Jesus gave birth to her and she got born again. Amen. Got born again. Amen. Amen. So she needs the joy of salvation. Secondly, she needs the joy of surrender. And God told maybe his will for her life, she didn't kick out the traces. She surrendered. In verse 38, had Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Handmaid means a bond slave, but it's a willing slave. Amen. And her surrender is going to be costly. Real surrender can be very costly. People in your own family may turn against you. You're right. Some of your, own, your friends won't understand you. See? So surrender can be costly. It was costly for Mary because Mary is going to be showing shortly and she's not married yet. See? So there's a joy in surrender. And Mary surrendered every bit of Mary. See, First Thessalonians 5.23 says, Paul said, I pray God preserve your whole body, soul, and spirit, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's see if God had her body, soul, and spirit. With a body she gave birth to our Lord. And then the Bible tells us with her soul, in verse 46, she magnified the Lord. Then verse 47, with her spirit, she rejoiced in the Lord. That's all of Mary. Body, soul, and spirit. Does God have all of you? Does God have all of me? I wouldn't have ever answered me. That's right. And uh, <clears throat> and there's a joy that comes in surrender, as well as getting saved. I remember when God called me to preach. I didn't to God be the I didn't run one day. I was so glad He called me to preach. If He hadn't called me, I believe I'd have called myself. <laughs> so there's a joy that comes in surrender. Reminds me of what I understand to be a true story. A full-blooded Indian came into the service and uh, sat down in the back of the auditorium. The preacher was up preaching. The power of God came down and God put him under conviction. So down the aisles he came. And remember I said he's a full-blooded Indian. He took that preacher by the hand. He said, God won't need him to give Tommy Hall. So he gave his Tommy Hall to God. Went back, sat down, still had no peace of mind, no peace of heart. Came back down there and took the preacher by the hand and said, God won't need to give him born air. So he gave his born air to God. Went back and sat down. A little bit he came back down there and said, God won't need to give pony. So he gave his pony to God. Went back there and sat down, still no peace of mind, no peace of heart. He came back down there and took the preacher by the hand and said, God won't need to give wife. Went back there and sat down, still no peace of mind, no peace of heart. He came down there one more time, and he said, God won't need to give Indian. He got peace of mind then. <laughs> Woo! That's what God wanted. He wanted that Indian. And that's what God wants. He wants you and me. See, I think of what Simon Peter said. No, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, in writing to the Christians, he said of those of Macedonia, he said they first gave of themselves to the Lord. See, so you and I can give some of this. We put money in the offering plate. We tithe, I tithe, me and my wife, we tithe, we, put, we give offerings too. And anytime there's a need, we give. But I'm going to tell you something other. It's a horse or another color to give yourself. Yeah. Some of you could give a $100 bill every Sunday and it wouldn't hurt you. But it'll cost you something other if you get that off and plate. So that reminds me of what happened to this little boy. I understand it's a true story, too. This little boy got saved, and he just really fell in love with Jesus. I meet folks like that sometimes. I know a young man who's like that, 
back when he was young. Man, he was just sold out to God a lot of thought and borrow. He was totally surrendered. But anyway, when it was passed an offering plate in this given service, when it came to that little boy, see now, they were very poor. Your daddy and mama didn't have anything on it at all. And so what he did when the offering plate got to him, he started crying. And the people overheard him say, Jesus, you know I love you. I thank you for saving me. I wish I had some money to give you, but you know, we're poor. We don't have any money. But before he packed that off and played up to the next person, he thought of something. He put that off and played on the floor, took his shoes off and got an off and plate and said, Jesus, I just give you me. Now you better believe that was one offering that Jesus was really satisfied with that day. That's what God wants. He wants me. He wants you. Yes. You're not going to be satisfied until you surrender to God. Amen. Just raise the white flag of surrender and say, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Praise God. The joy of surrender. There is a joy in surrendering to God. Then next of all, she not only used the joy of salvation, the joy of I surrender, but she knew the joy of sharing. So you find up here in verse 39, and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. And you know where she went. She went to see her cousin Elizabeth. Well, that's a good place to start, folks. Start with your kinfolk. I have a New Testament at home. I've had to tape it up. It started trying to come apart. The pages are stained from turning the pages so much. It, I knew it wore out. When I got saved, I got the New Testament, and I went after them. I mean, I went after them. I talked for anybody who listens to me about Jesus. Ken folks, friends, you name them. And, uh, and there's a joy in sharing Jesus with others. There's a joy in doing it. I'm going to tell you, that's something you and I will not be able to do in heaven. You may walk down the streets of gold. There will be streets of gold up there. The Bible teaches that. But you won't be going down the streets of gold handing out tracts and telling people how to be saved because everybody up there is already saved. There are no lost people up there. You better make sure you're born again because you're not, you're not going to be up there. You can sing when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. No, you won't unless you're born again. Amen. You won't unless you're saved. Yeah, I was a church member for years before I got saved. Most people get saved in meetings, I'll put you in a church member. The joy of sharing. So she went to Elizabeth and shared with her the fact that she's going to give birth to our Lord. She had a birth to share, and we take, we have a birth to share. We got born again. Hallelujah. We got something to tell them. If you've been born again, you got something to tell them, lost sinners. Joy and sharing. I know I keep tracks in all my suit coat pockets. There's one I wrote right there. I keep tracks in all my suit coat pockets and all my vehicles. I keep tracks everywhere. You can go out there and look at that truck out there, and you'll find a box there. Nearly full of tracks. You can open that back lid, and you'll find another box there. Nearly full of tracks. I never go to town but what I pass out there. We do most of our business in Malden, South Carolina, which is just a few miles from the house. I grocery shopping, banking, and one thing or another. And every time I go to that town, I pass out tracks. Now, I don't push myself on people, but I pass them out. See, and I enjoy it. I love to do it. As a matter of fact, I've been stopped in five different cracker barrels passing out tracks. <laughs> you say, what do you do? Well, I used to get upset and God convicted me about that. The Bible says be harmless as a dove. Right. See, you're not going to cram God down anybody's throat. Right. We've got to show them that we love them if we're going to win them. Right. See, and... Uh, <clears throat> So, so when I go in a Cracker Barrel, and, and usually I'll look and try to find out where that manager's at, because that's the one that always stops. 
See, if I can catch him with his back turned, I'm going to pass some out. <laughs> and if he catches me, come on and stop me, I'm, I'm going to say, that's, okay, okay, that's all right. Okay, I'm not going to get upset with him, though. And uh, I'm not going to get mad with him. I like fried chicken too much. I remember passing that track. It hadn't been too long ago. I went to give this man a track, and he was kind of rude, you know. And uh, so I started to walk off, but this was one of those days when I was on cloud nine. My feet wouldn't hardly touch the ground. I was so happy in the Lord. So I said, I know what I'm going to do. I went back over there, and I didn't open my track. I just said, sir, I just want to tell you that Jesus is more real than the skin on your flesh than the flesh on your bones. I could have said the skin on my flesh, flesh on my bones, but I, no, I want to say he's more real than the skin on your flesh and flesh on your bones, because I knew if I did that every time he took a bath, he'd remember what I said. <laughs> it's exciting life, don't miss it, folks. You'll love this one, listen to this one. <clears throat> like I said, every time I go to town, no matter where I go, I pass out track. I go all through the grocery store, pass and I pass out. And, and sometimes the manager of the grocery store, they'll stop me too. See. But anyway, I had to go to Home Depot, get some supplies or something or you know. I was working on a project there around the house or something. And so I started walking through there, and on the way to get what I wanted to get, I was passing out tracks. And I came this fairly large, tall man, and I went and handed him a track, and he said, I said, no, I don't need that. And I said, well, Jesus loves you. Boy, I didn't get that out of my mouth good. Boy, that man turned around. He said, I know one thing. If you voted for Donald Trump, you're going to hell. <laughs> I said, what's that got to do with getting saved? <laughs> if I'd have thought it, I might have said, well, if I'd have voted for that woman that run against him, I'd have sure went to hell. <laughs> comes in chair. I remember one time I was wearing shows, passing out through the tracks, and a man with a baby in his arm came up to me. I said, have I ever given you one of these? He said, yes, you gave me one of those years ago, and I got it down just the other day and read it. It said, God put me on a conviction. I knelt at the bedside there in the house, and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now we're going to Golden Creek Baptist Church with Brother Randy McAllister, the pastor. Boy, I make you want to pass them out with both hands. Folks, they're out there. We got a lot of people here in Knoxville. No doubt most of them are lost. That's so sad. So sad. So sad. <coughs> well, I was passing out tracks over here in Hampton Inn where I'm staying. Y'all always put me in such a nice place. I don't deserve it, but thank you. But anyway, I went to give this woman and I guess this other woman with her who was going with the daughter and then her husband. I went to give her a track and she said, no, you, you give that to somebody else. I'm a member of the First Baptist Church and she told me where that First Baptist Church is at, over in South Carolina where I live. And uh, so she wouldn't take it. She didn't, she didn't even want me to give one to her daughter. She said, no, she's more active in the church than I am. See. But when I was over there eating breakfast, you know, have a continental breakfast. When I was eating breakfast this morning, that daughter of hers, man, she didn't have one hardly any clothes at all. I, and I was tempted. I didn't do it. But, boy, I was tempted to go up to her and say, I thought y'all was a member. I thought y'all were members of the First Baptist Church. I wanted to say, if you are, then why are you dressed like that? Folks, don't ever throw away your standards. Amen. Years ago, God showed me that the standard under grace is higher than the standard under the law. Amen. Remember the message I preached on free from the law, oh happy condition. 
I'm going to tell you, it's such a God to save my soul. I like to have plenty of clothes on. I like to have plenty of clothes on. I despise to see people running around half naked. And while I'm on this, ladies, the Bible says that the women ought to adorn themselves with modest apparel. And that's in the New Testament, under grace. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Amen. You give me a baby suit, I'm going to make a grease rag out of it. That's right. Wouldn't I be a pretty thing in a bathing suit? <laughs> Those ladies ain't seen no sunshine in so long. Look like white cotton candy. <clears throat> I put one of them things on, I'd look like a watermelon with two toothpicks sticking out of it. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. You want me to go to the next point now? To... <laughs> Woo, having a good time, man. Praise the Lord. Y'all done prayed for me and anoint me at all and don't have the hiccups. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I was wanting to preach. I was wanting to preach. <clears throat> so the joy that comes in getting saved, the joy that comes in surrender, the come there's a joy that comes in sharing. And then there's a joy that comes from the scriptures. May was full of the word of God. You see, starting with verse 49, she said, For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And I won't take time to read all this. But these are extra quotes out of the books, some of the books in the Old Testament. Well, she quoted from Genesis, from Exodus. She quoted from 1 Samuel. She quoted from, uh, quoted from Job. She quoted from Psalms, Isaiah. She quoted Michael 5, 2, of course. Uh, Mabel was full of the Word of God, but how did she know so much of the Word of God? Because the common people didn't have copies of the Word of God. I mean, they didn't have print and presses where they put together a Bible like you and I've got with nice leather bags. On. They didn't have that. They just scrolled with a crude thing, rolled up from the end. And they weren't on every coffee table. They were not in every car seat. See? They were scarce, few and far between. It's doubtful that Mary and Joseph had a coffee because they were among the poor people, the common people. We know that because of the offering that they offered when they went up to the temple with Jesus. It was a Turtle dove or pigeon, that's often to the poor. They couldn't offer a lamb, see. And uh, so, so maybe Paul didn't even have a copy of the Word of God. Well, then why, why, how did she know so much of the Word of God? I'll tell you exactly how. They had synagogues like we have churches. And the people went to synagogue and they had what you call a reader to stand before the crowd and re just read from those scrolls, just read scripture. Remember Jesus? He went in the synagogue and began to read from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is up on me because he's going to me to put the gospel so forth and so on. And uh, no doubt maybe probably sitting right on the edge of the pew, so to speak. I'm sure didn't have a pew, though, yes. But anyway, she's probably sitting right on the edge or whatever she's sitting on, just getting all she could. See, she wasn't there daydreaming about what she's going to eat after the service or where she's going to go eat or something like that. She was taking the word of God in. And it showed up in a song. I'm telling you, you can't go through this book without this book going through you. It's alive. The Bible says the word of God is quick. That means it's alive. There's no other book in the world like, like your Bible. And if you don't have a King James Bible, go buy you one. Go get you one. I remember Dr. Harold B. Sattler, he used to say this. He'd say, uh, he said, if you don't have a King James Bible, you don't have a Bible. Amen. And uh, I like that. I like my King James Bible. Amen. I like it, praise God. Jeremiah 15, 16, Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and thy word, and he said, And I did eat them, and thy word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Notice that, joy. Joy comes from reading the scriptures. One of the first things I do when I get up every morning is reach for my Bible. 
Now, before I reach for my Bible, I said one of the first things. Before I reach for my Bible, I get my glass of tea. My coffee, she, uh, my wife, she gets a cup of coffee. See, I'm a Christian, she's not. <laughs> no, I'm joking. If you don't ever drink anything strong coffee, you'll be all right. I'd probably drink if I have a taste for it, but I, mm -mm. I don't think you taste for it. But anyway, <clears throat> Mabel was full of the word of God. Let me hurry. She knew that George of scriptures. Like I said, she was quoting from all through the Old Testament and then showed up in her song. And by the way, if you get full of the word of God, you'll have a song. Amen. You'll have a song. Amen. I like to go in my study, and I've got worlds and worlds of old cassette tapes and one thing or another. Some of the music that I made a long, long time ago, some of them just barely well played, they're just old. But I like going there and put one in the tape deck and turn it on and sit there and worship. A.W. Tozer was a godly man, very godly man. And he said, worship is the missing ingredient in our church. Amen. Yeah, we need to worship God. Amen. Worship God. See, we can't really communicate God to others if we don't spend time with God. Amen. Amen. Then next of all, she needed the joy of the Spirit, and I'll be done. The Bible tells us in verse 35, the Holy Ghost will come upon thee. And it seems like everybody in this chapter was filled with the Spirit. Amen. In verse 15, it tells us that John was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 41, it says that his mother Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you go down to verse 67, and you see where Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, folks, that's 100%. Dad was filled with the Spirit. Mom was filled with the Spirit. The only child was filled with the Spirit. Yeah. You let every family in this church, daddy, mama, children, get filled with the Spirit of God when we come to church. They won't, nobody will have to prime pump you. You'll be ready to worship. Amen. Your heart will be in it, too. Amen. You won't just go through the motions. See, I want to ask you something by way of conclusion. Are you a joyful Christian? Is Jesus real to you? Do you love the Lord? You might want to come down this altar. And just tell the Lord, say, Lord, I've lost the joy of my salvation. Would you please restore the joy of my salvation? That's what David had to pray after he committed that awful, awful sin of adultery. Will you stand your feet, head about eyes closed? You've been so attentive, and I want to thank you. We love you people here and love your pastor and his family. I have a brief word of prayer with you. Some of you may want to come on to the altar while I'm praying. Father, Father, I cannot thank you enough for saving my own soul. <clears throat> Father, I thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for so great a salvation. Thank you we can be joyful Christians. I think we don't have to leave here like we came here. I think we can go out there and roll us with the victory, with a song in our heart. Oh, God, thank you for so great, so great a salvation. I can't think enough for saving my own soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the best thing ever happened to me, ever will happen to me. Please, God. Has anyone here has lost their joy? Please help them get in this altar. And God, help them. Father, to get things right, make things right with you, and get the joy of the Lord back in our hearts. Speak now, God, speak. Because you come now.